Hi, you guys. Welcome to the Inner Growth Podcast. If you are a new listener, hi, I'm Carolina. And if you are a returning listener, welcome back, fam. It feels really good to be back on the mic, to be recording again. I took a small little break from the podcast. We were traveling for quite a while towards the end of last year, going into 2024. And I just wanted to give myself some space to just pour back into my own cup so that I could come back to the podcast from a full cup and to pour out of my overflow and to also get excited to record again, to get excited to share with you guys different things that are in my mind, different pieces of advice, and to share different tools for your inner growth journey. So we're back. We are back and it feels very, very good to say that. And on today's episode, we're going to be talking about how to get back into a routine that works for you, that makes you feel amazing, that makes you feel excited, and that feels nourishing. And the reason I want to talk about that today is it's the beginning of the year, and I feel like around this time of the year, a lot of people are thinking about their habits, they're thinking about their routines, they're thinking about how they want to show up in the new year, who they want to be, and how they want to take care of themselves. And I'm not going to lie, when the year started off, I was traveling, right? And as I was traveling, I was like scrolling through my phone whenever I had Wi-Fi. And every time I hopped on Instagram, it seemed like everyone and their mother was doing 75 hard or starting a really intense workout challenge or starting a really intense like three-month transformation program and whatever. And I did not start the year off like that. And I wanted to just take a moment and tell you that if you started off the year and you didn't have any crazy challenge that you were doing or anything like that, that is totally okay. And you do not have to be doing that to feel like your best self in 2024. You really don't. And what it comes down to is figuring out what works for you. And Take this from someone who has done the 75 Heart Challenge. If you guys don't know this, I started my TikTok, like my first social media platform, sharing my 75 Heart journey. This was like peak COVID, like everyone was home, no one was doing anything. And I had so much time in my hands and I just decided to do the challenge and to share it on social media and document the journey. And one thing led to the other. And now here we are almost four years later. Social media is now my full-time job. Coaching is my full-time job. YouTube, just working with awesome brands. Like, look at how the times have changed. But I'm just saying all this to make a point, to make the point that I have done 75 hard. And I know how intense it is. And I also know that it isn't necessarily sustainable. Like, it's not sustainable and achievable to do something long-term like the 75 hard, right? So if you're going to take 75 days to drink a gallon of water and work out twice a day and do all these things, like, the only reason you would do that is to challenge yourself, really. Because if you're trying to create something that's going to last you for a really long time, that you can stay consistent with, that's going to make you feel really good in the long term, that's not the 75 hard. That's not the habits that you create in the 75 hard because it's a very restrictive challenge. So on today's episode, what we're going to talk about is how you can create your own version of health, how you can create your own habits and routines that work for your lifestyle and that work with your bandwidth that you have to give and that feels good to you. So that's what we're going to dive into today. I hope it leaves you feeling motivated and inspired. And if it does, definitely let me know. You can always drop a comment on YouTube if you're watching this on YouTube. You can always leave an answer in the Q&A box on Spotify or just DM me either at the Caroline Lifestyle or at innergrowth.co on Instagram. And yeah, let's dive into it. Let's get growing. And I will see you guys on the other side. Okay, let's talk routines, let's talk habits, let's talk self-care, and let's talk bio-individuality. Let's talk about self-care applied to you as an individual with very specific goals, with a very specific workload, with a very specific routine. Let's talk about how do you craft that perfect routine that feels really good to you. I shouldn't even use the word perfect. I'm catching myself because we're not aiming for perfection. We're aiming for self-compassion and for sustainability and for a loving approach, not a perfect approach. 
Okay, so first things first. As I mentioned, I was traveling for five weeks with Pedro. And during that period, I was very much off of routine. I was completely disconnected from my self-care, really. I was trying my best to like get some protein when I was out to eat. But like when you're vacationing through Rome, you're not going to go eat a salad. Like you're going to eat the pizza or I was going to eat the pizza. I was going to eat the pasta. I was going to eat the gelato. Like I was going to eat the tiramisu. Like I was allowing myself to really enjoy being off of routine and enjoy the vibes of just being traveling, seeing different places and just exploring. So yes, we were like walking and I tried my best to drink water and drink electrolytes when I could like in my flights and things. Yes, I tried to eat protein when I could. But to be completely honest, I was very much off of my usual routine. I didn't have a gym really for a lot of the trip. So I had to make do with what I could. I relied on walking a lot as like movement. And in the sense of like movement makes me feel really good. So that's why I like look forward to it and like like to lean into it. But I just embraced being completely off of my normal habits. And that taught me a lot. It taught me how to be flexible. It taught me how to be okay with not being so much in control of things. And it also taught me that it's so okay to actually enjoy your vacation fully without really worrying that much. Like your weight doesn't change that much. Like things don't change that much. And this was not like a week long trip or two week long trip. It was like a month and a half long period of traveling. So it really pushed my boundaries. It pushed me outside my comfort zone, but like in a good way. And so that's what I went into 2024 doing. Like that was my end of 2023. That was how I started off the year. And that's honestly how I start a lot of many years. Like I usually do some end of year traveling anyway, but this was the longest stretch of time that I traveled in one go. So definitely the first time for me doing that. And I know some of you guys want me to do a full travel recap, so I can definitely do that in another episode. Hopefully, I can get Pedro to hop on that episode and we can do it together. But that is kind of how I started off the year, right? And so when I got back to New York, which was a little over two weeks ago, my nervous system, like my immune system crashed. And all the moments of pushing my body throughout the trip to just keep going caught up to me. And I got a little bit sick. So I had a cold. I was kind of like congested, tired. And all I could do for the whole first week of being back was sleep a lot, watch TV, lay in the couch and eat food. As like whatever I could make, really. I didn't even have that much energy to cook. So Pedro definitely helped out a little bit with that. But anyway, that was my first week being back. And I really wanted to take that time to fully rest my body before getting into any habits or routines because I didn't want to push my body against my limits, right? I didn't want to do things just because I felt like I needed to be doing it. Like, of course, I wanted to get back into a routine, but I also wanted to give my body enough time to get there and to feel good enough to move and to do things like cooking. So that was my attitude going into this process of creating a routine from scratch, basically, like coming back to ground zero and being like, okay, what habits do I want to build? What routine do I want in this year going into the rest of the year? So that's kind of like how the year started off. But I forgot to mention too, that when we were traveling, right, as I said, I was very much out of my comfort zone. I was very much in this vibe of like going with the flow and embracing not being so much in control of things. But I also got to a point where I realized that like traveling for five weeks is a lot for my body. Like I really admire people who are digital nomads and who spent like a year traveling because it's a lot. It's a lot of energy and it's just a lot of changes all the time to constantly be changing environments, to constantly be living out of a suitcase, to be wearing the same clothes over and over, to really have no structure or routine at all. Like It can be very destabilizing and that's kind of how I felt, especially as the trip was coming to a close. I was like very excited to get back home by that point because I really missed having a routine. And so I started this process of creating a routine from excitement, from an energy of looking forward to it. And that's what I would encourage you to tap into within yourself 
when you're starting to approach any routine or wanting to create a routine for yourself is just try your best to do it from an energy of looking forward to it, of having fun and of excitement and of choosing something that feels good to you, right? Choosing something because it's nourishing and loving to your body and to your mind and to your soul, not because you have to or you should or all these other people are doing it. Just connect with an energy of self-love when you're approaching this. That's what I wanted to lay down as the groundwork before we hop on to my seven hot tips on how to create a routine that works for you. So tip number one is write a list. It's simple. Just take a piece of paper, open up your journal, open up a fresh page in a new journal if you want, and write out what would be the habits that you would want to have in your routine. Maybe it's just two habits. Maybe for you, it's just having breakfast and drinking enough water. Maybe that's all you need, but maybe you have other habits that you want to implement. So I'll just share with you guys the habits that I wanted to implement as I went into this process of creating my routine. But again, you're going to make your own list and it's simple. You're just going to take a piece of paper and you're going to draw it down. Drink two liters of water a day. Work out five times a week. Do a mix of running and strength training, whatever it is. So what were the habits that I wanted to tap into this year? Well, there were five key habits that were very important to me. First is moving my body regularly. I just love moving my body. Like it just feels so good to me. It gives me endorphins. It helps my mental health. It helps me be nicer to people and it helps me be more mentally clear. So that was really important to me. Number two, drinking enough water. I used to not drink water at all. And then when I started drinking enough water, I just started realizing how much better I felt, how much more vibrant I felt my skin got better my digestion got better my bowel movements got better like everything improved so drinking water is always important to me like drinking two big Stanley bottles for me that's my goal number three is getting enough sleep so going to bed at a reasonable hour and getting like seven hours and a half to eight hours and a half of sleep every single night and tied in with that was like going to bed earlier. So going to bed between 9 and 10.30, like being in bed by then. And then two other habits that I really wanted to implement were meditation and journaling. And I had been disconnected from both of these habits for a really long time. The last time that I remember meditating was in August of 2023 when I was here in New York in the summer. And then I remember when I went to Brazil at the end of August for a wedding, that's when I stopped meditating. And I did not do a single minute of meditation (laughs) between August and now, basically like January, 2024. So that was important to me. I really, really wanted to get back into the habit of meditating. And then there were also other little micro habits that I wanted to introduce into my life, but that weren't like the top five, right? So some of those were doing gua sha in the morning, drinking more greens, whether it's like fresh homemade green juice or like a greens powder with water, cleaning my space, keeping my home neat and organized. So like doing like five minute cleanups, like five minutes in the morning, five minutes at night. And then also something that's like already a habit of mine and part of who I am, but is obviously a habit that for me is important is eating home cooked meals. I love going out to eat. I love trying new restaurants, especially when I'm traveling or even in New York, which is such a foodie city. But Eating at home for me just hits a different spot, you know? It just lights me up in a different way. I just love creating dishes and recipes and trying different things in the kitchen and also just knowing that I'm feeding myself well and giving myself nutrients. To me, that's really important. just feels really, really nice to my body and my mind and my soul. And so that's obviously a habit that I wanted to get back into. But that was my list. So I would encourage you to make your own list and just write it out. Simple. Number two, which ties in with number one, is I want you to be super, super intentional. I don't want you to go and write all these things that I just said because I am doing them. I want you to be intentional and realistic with what you can do. If you have crazy work hours, if you're someone who works like from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. every single day, it's not feasible to ask that of yourself. So get real about how much energy you have to give, 
how much time you have to give without sacrificing your sleep and without self-sabotaging. Like what is something that feels realistic for you and loving? And remember that you are a bio-individual. So what works for someone else might not work for you. What works for you might not work for me. So that's why it's so important to really be honest with yourself with what you need and with what is most important. So come up with your top habits. Come up with a list of top three or top five things that are important to you and start there. Okay. Number three is make it fun. Make the habits that you want to get into fun because if you are doing things because you should or because you think you're supposed to do them but you actually hate them it's gonna be really hard to stay consistent it's gonna be really really hard for you to want to show up for them in the first place and then for you to do them regularly so what I would recommend is come up with different ways to spice it up to zhuzh it up to make it more exciting some ideas for you if you are someone who wants to get back into working out Find workouts you actually like. Don't do workouts that you hate. Like if you hate running or if you hate spinning, don't go and book a class to go to a spinning class, right? Do the workouts that you enjoy. And if you don't know what you enjoy, try everything. Like try all possible types of workouts. Try Pilates, try yoga, try running, try long walks on the treadmill, try incline walking, try spinning, try boxing, try different online studios, different YouTube workouts, dance, cardio, all these options and then figure out what you enjoy. Maybe you also like sports, like maybe you prefer playing a sport instead of doing a home workout. Like do what do you like and figure that out for yourself. Another idea, make a really dope playlist that you love and that is exciting that makes you want to dance and that's a high vibe for you and listen to that playlist while you're working out have that be your workout playlist that is such a hack especially for walks running or if you're doing workouts where you don't have to be watching a video such a hack I love that Or if you're going to a studio, just like figure out what instructor you like the best. Maybe you go to a class and you don't like it at first, but it's just because you didn't love the instructor. Try it again and try it with a different instructor and see if you like that more. Or maybe you hate it and you drop it and then go to another one. But really get playful and figure out what's best for you. Another idea, if you want to get back into journaling or meditation, something I started doing is making it a vibe. Like what I've been doing is I wake up, I make my matcha, I make a little greens juice, I bring it to my office, sometimes I light a candle, and then I drink a little bit of each, I do my five minutes of meditation, and then I play some jazz music, or there's this playlist on Spotify that's called Ambient X, and it's really, really nice, and I just play that, and then I do my journaling, and then I get on with my morning, and just doing a little something to make it more special, whether that's bringing your favorite beverage or playing some nice yummy music, lighting a candle, using a diffuser, taking some essential oils or your favorite crystal, just make it a vibe. And making it a vibe will make it more fun. And by making it more fun, you're going to be more excited to do it. And therefore, you're going to do it more. And there is therefore, it's going to become a habit. And therefore, you're going to be consistent with it and you're going to see results. That's the key. Okay, number four is create structures or lean into structures around these habits. So especially when you're getting back into a routine or you're creating a routine from scratch, the best thing you can do to help yourself get into a flow and also get excited about showing up is finding a structure. So I'll explain to you guys some things that I did that have helped me with my top five habits, or at least with three of them. So with working out, I decided that I wanted to re-download the form app, which is Demi Clark's workout app. And I have done it for a really long time. I did it a lot in 2023 and I decided to re-download it in 2024 because I got a new phone and I didn't download it at first. So I downloaded that and Sammy created a January jumpstart program. So it was two weeks where she told you essentially what to do every single day, what workout to do, 
Every single workout was 30 or 35 minutes. And all I had to do was open up the app, click what day it was, and follow the workout. And giving myself that structure, one, made me excited. Two, made my life a lot easier because I didn't have to use any mind space to figure out what workout I was going to do or how long it was going to be or come up with a plan for myself. She came up with it. So all I had to do was follow it. And in apps like Sammy's, for example, there is also other like options. So she does a weekly schedule that's just Pilates, a weekly schedule that's just strength, and a weekly schedule that's strength and Pilates. And she lays out the workouts for you every single week. So that's what I'm going to continue doing once I finish the Jumpstart program, which I'm almost done with because I'm in the second week now. So Find a workout program or find a challenge that you can do with that workout specifically. I'm not saying do 75 hard. I'm saying come up with maybe a little structure for your workouts. Maybe you go to your spin class every Monday and Tuesday and then you do a long walk every Friday. Like maybe that's your structure. But just try to give yourself some structure so that it makes it easy for you to show up for it. Okay, another example on how to create structures that I used for the two habits that I was the most disconnected from, which was meditation and journaling. With meditation, my best friend Gabby told me about this app called Balance, which I had not heard about before, but it's literally such a cool app. And what they do is they basically make personalized meditations for you based on your goals and how familiar you are with meditation and the information that you input every single day. It's like they ask you a couple questions, and then they make a tailored meditation for you. And the awesome part about this app is that they want to make meditation more accessible for people, and they want people to actually give it a try for a longer period of time so that they can see the benefits, so that they can create consistency, and then as a result, want to keep going with it, right? So they give you a free year. And you can decide if you want to compensate them in some way. I think I paid maybe like five bucks or 10 bucks, but you can just do it for free if you want. And then you can start paying after a year. But it's so cool. And all you have to do is open the app up. They focus on different meditation skills. So there's nine skills and there's like a foundations plan. And then for every single skill, there's like a different plan. So similarly to the January Jumpstart program, all you have to do is open up the app input answers to a couple of questions and then they make a tailored meditation for you and you just have to decide if you want to do three five or ten minutes so easy i've been doing five just because i've been really trying to get back into it and making it easy because when i think oh my gosh i have to sit and meditate for 10 minutes it really makes me not look forward to it so with five i'm always like it's a little bit more than a song like i can do that so That's what I've been doing for my meditation. And then for my journaling practice, I think giving myself structure there has also really helped because it can be hard to know where to go with your meditation practice. And sometimes I just like mind dump and that takes me like 45 minutes. There was a period of time that I was doing the artist's way, which is like a three page long journaling in the morning, which takes like an hour, like so long. Um, so I wanted to come up with a structure that was easy and that gave me just something to look forward to and that also felt nourishing. So what I decided to do, well, actually what happened, which was really cool was my friend Gabby also told me that she had been watching some videos about stoicism on YouTube and I got really curious about it. So I was like, huh, like send me those videos. So she sent me one that was seven morning habits that stoics, that stoics advocate for. So I watched that video and it mentioned how meditation and journaling are great morning habits. But in the video, they also mentioned what they recommended that you journal about to apply stoicism practices into your life. So basically, the four prompts that I do every single morning based on that video are the first thing is I just do a quick mind dump. So just like jotting down a couple of things from the day before that I might be thinking about, lingering thoughts from my dreams, or just like different things that I'm thinking about. Very quick. I don't go overboard with it. I cut myself off before it starts to get too long. Then I do three gratitudes. Then we go into self-reflection. So 
Basically, you can reflect on a personal challenge or you can look up like stoicism self-reflection questions on Google and there's a ton and it's kind of questions like, how did I act out of impulse yesterday instead of out of reason? How am I living or not living in alignment with my values? How can I personally challenge myself and push myself outside my comfort zone and how would that lead to character development for me? Little things like that. So just a quick reflection every single morning. And then the last thing is just an intention, just one phrase. And what I loved in this video that I watched is that the reason stoicism advocates for setting an intention is that goals are future oriented. They direct you towards a destination, towards an end result. But intentions are about how you're choosing to live the present moment. How are you showing up in your life? What is the quality of your character? What is your moral compass for the day? So it's about how you're showing up and not about measuring your success based on how much you achieve. And I love that. And so I've just been setting a little intention every morning. And those four prompts have been making it so much easier for me to show up for journaling because I know what to expect. I know that it only takes me 10 minutes. So my meditation and my journaling together take 15 minutes which is so doable. It's so quick. It's easy to slot into my morning. So those are my tips on how I have been adding structure, but I want you to think about how you can create structure. So how can you make it easier for yourself to do certain habits by coming up with a little game plan on how you do them and making it easier for yourself by removing decision making from the equation, right? How can you just not have to pick your workout every single day? How can it just be laid out for you? How can you just make it easy for yourself to journal by just having prompts that you do? How can you make it easy for yourself to cook? For example, maybe you have a little menu for the week or you grocery shop in advance or you meal prep and you already have everything done in the fridge. Like there's different ways to add structure. So come up with something that works for you. So, and before we move on to the next tip, One last thing I'll say about creating structures around your habits is that an easy way to create structure is to just come up with how frequently you want to do a habit, for how long, and at what time of day. So for example, when it comes to meditation, journaling, and working out, I know that I am more likely to do these habits in the morning. If I don't do them in the morning, I'm not probably going to do them. So that's just something I know about myself. And I know that I'm going to meditate for five or 10, journal for 10, and then work out for like 30 minutes if I just do the four map or an hour if I do 30 minutes of the four map, 30 minutes in the treadmill. And that's what I've been doing as of now. But just think about when you want to do the things you want to implement and then for how long. So how long they're going to take. And that's just like an easy way to give yourself structure also. Okay, so as of now, here are the four tips I've shared. Make a list, be intentional and realistic, make it fun, and then create structures. Tip number five is slot habits with something that you already do. Since there are certain things in your life that you have already been doing, just think about them and then ask yourself, how can I combine a habit that I want to add in with something that I already do? I'll give you an example. I brush my teeth every single morning, first thing in the morning, and I love doing my gua sha routine in the morning as well. So I just know now whenever I brush my teeth, I just do my gua sha right after I take out my little face oil, take out my gua sha, I do it. It's easy. It's quick. It's done. Once I put my gua sha away, I'm ready to go. And I go to my kitchen to make my matcha and my greens and stuff like that. That's just like one example. Another one is related to my night routine. I have been really wanting to go to bed earlier, as I mentioned. And so what I started doing is making a little magnesium drink after dinner. I have been really liking the magnesium powder by Moon Juice. I have had this powder in my cupboard for so long and I didn't try it for a long time because I was already taking magnesium in like capsule format. But this might be like my new favorite way of taking magnesium. First of all, it tastes like a raspberry jello. Like it's so yummy. So I like mix it into my water and make my little pink drink. I drink it. I also could make tea if I wanted to, but I haven't been drinking that much tea since I started doing this. And then after that, I go to my bathroom, I do my skincare, take off my contacts, brush my teeth, etc. And then I lay in bed and I read my books. And something that has been so 
exciting in my life, which I've been talking about a lot on socials, is I'm reading the A Court of Thorns and Roses series, Akatar. If you have heard about it, it is worth the hype. I just finished the second book and I read the first and the second book in three weeks or actually two weeks and a half probably. And it's just so good. I am hooked and I don't want it to end. I know that I'm just devouring these books and soon I'm going to finish the series. But truthfully, reading a book that you are excited to know what's going to happen next is going to get you to go to bed earlier because you're going to want to read it. So that is a hack there as well. But that's a little way that I've slotted habits in with my night routine. Like I know I need to get into bed, right? And so like trace it back. Okay, before bed, I read. Before I read, I do my skincare and brush my teeth and take out my contacts. And before that is when I drink my little pink drink. So slot your habits in with each other or maybe even come up with two habits that you can do in one and that can make it a lot easier for you. Okay, tip number six is one thing at a time. Take it one day at a time, take it one week at a time and take it one habit at a time. Every day is an opportunity for you to connect again with a habit and to build habits of doing things. But take it a day at a time, right? So when I started implementing all these things and creating my routine, which I actually filmed this entire week of getting back into routine, it'll be up on YouTube by the end of this week. So you can go watch that if you're interested to just see see like me in action doing these things. But what I did was I focused on a habit per day. And the reason I did that is because a lot of these things I was already doing before I traveled, like I was already cooking, I was already drinking water and working out before I went on vacation. But when it came to like the journaling and the meditation, I wasn't doing that for a really long time. So take it a day at a time and introduce one thing at a time. So what I did was first I went to the grocery store, got my food, laid out my kitchen with enough food to cook. Then the next day I started actually making homemade recipes for breakfast, lunch, dinner. Then the next day I started the January Jumpstart program. And then the next day was when I created my little like meditation practice with the balance app. And then the next day was when I added in the journaling piece to do together with the meditation. And then Over time, I realized the order that worked best for me. So I realized that it was meditating first, journaling next, and then going to the gym. But there was another day that week where I went to meditate first, then I went to the gym, then I journaled. So you just have to figure out the order for you and you might not get it right in the first try. So take it a day at a time, take it one thing at a time. And by adding things slowly into your life, it'll be less overwhelming. Because if you're like, okay, tomorrow I need to start this new routine and I need to do 10 million things all at once, like you're going to overwhelm yourself. That's the truth. And when you overwhelm yourself, you're way less likely to stay consistent with things. It's way more likely that you will drop them or that you will give up on this habit. So just keep that in mind and don't try to do too much too fast. All right, you guys, last but not least, tip number seven. We are not aiming for perfection anymore. No more perfectionism. You don't have to be perfect to stay consistent. And actually, if you try to be perfect, you're more likely to not be consistent because you're going to end up putting so much pressure on yourself that it's going to feel so overwhelming, so intense. And if you do something that you think is imperfect or you miss a day let's say of like your meditation practice or you miss a day of this workout challenge that you're doing then you're like oh my gosh I failed it I failed the program I lost my streak like I was doing so well and I missed a day and then that self-talk it's not motivating right it's not going to motivate you to show up again so just remember that if you don't do something one day that's okay just show up for it again the next day recommit to yourself and Give yourself grace. Like some days are busier than others. Some days are just more stressful or you have less time or maybe you were more tired from the day before and you slept in a little more and you got more sleep and you didn't have time to do all your habits. That's totally okay. You're a human. You're not supposed to be perfect. And so just give yourself a lot of grace and that's what's going to help you create the most loving routine. 
and it's going to help you stay consistent with the habits that you want to have. So those are my seven tips. Let's recap them. Make a list, be intentional, have fun, create structures, slot habits with things you already do, take it one day at a time and one thing at a time, and no more perfectionism. Be graceful, be compassionate, and be loving. And that is the recipe for success with creating a routine that makes you feel like your best self, that makes you glow from the inside out, and that works for you. So I hope this episode left you feeling motivated and excited and that it has maybe helped you see habit setting and the creating of routines in a different way. If it did, please let me know. I love you guys so much. If you are not yet subscribed on YouTube, make sure to do that so you can be in the loop of all the future episodes on there and so we can be YouTube friends on there. And if you are listening on Spotify and Apple, don't forget to subscribe or hit the plus button and the bell icons so you can be notified of future episodes as well. I will see you guys next week. We're back in action. I made a little Q&A box on my broadcast channel on Instagram and asked you guys for podcast episode requests. So thank you guys for submitting all of your requests on there. I'm so excited to record all of those episodes. There is so much to come. I love you all so much. And don't forget to water yourself. And I will see you very soon. Bye-bye.